Something happens every day, but it's kind of hard to report on it if we don't have the right ears or the right witnesses. I was in the sixth grade in the gym and someone had dropped the trash and I was on my way to like pick it up. A kid, he was like, pick up my trash because you're a slave. And I was like, excuse me, <laughs> like, are you, are, like, is this real? One of the worst instances I probably had when someone said they were gonna call the KKK on me um, at school. I was at my locker and I was like, just get out of my face. I feel like them taking away African-American history is not teaching the students how to respect African-American people or when they see someone getting bullied or when someone's being racist to somebody, they're not going to call them out on it. African-American history will give us a bit of a background where we've come from and how we came together as a whole and as a community and what accomplishments we've done. But it's kind of hard to, you know, know where we came from when they're not teaching it. Growing up as a black girl in Williamson County is hard. It really did affect like my image, and I used to cry to my mom. I used to be like, I used to cry to think I look crazy, like just going to school. Like, like I don't understand like what's wrong with me. When my sister comes to high school, I, I want her to have a good experience without anybody telling her hair looks funny or without anybody telling her, her skin looks funny. I also want her to be taught like real African-American history, you know, and I want her to know about where, more where she came from. When I heard they were like removing African-American history and like banning LGBTQ, I'm just like, I almost started crying because it's definitely emotional because we're not doing anything to anybody. Like, why do they care what we personally prefer or what we look like? <laughs> When starting with classroom and curriculum censorship, that was, you know, an effort to control what teachers can do in the classroom, but as a result, was removing and denying an inclusive opportunity for students. We've seen that connect from not only curriculum, but different anti-LGBTQ laws, such as pronouns restrictions, and moving beyond curriculum. I think that highlights not only what students can learn, but the learning environment that we are creating for students or not creating for students. At the next light, turn left. In 2020, late 2020, I started reflecting on myself and my identity. And I first started out with identifying as non-binary. I tried using she, they pronouns. It felt right to me, like something about that. It felt good to make a change. And now I prefer more he, him, or he, they pronouns. The people at my school have been very supportive, but there are policies in the school district that you know might make them less supportive. Even though I have my name changed in the school system, I know my some of my friends don't, and they would prefer to be called a different nickname, and that's not fair to them. I don't want my friends to be misgendered and deadnamed every single day just because they don't want to come out to their parents. Good evening, everybody. So to start going to school board meetings but not seeing a lot of students, you kind of want to just encourage students to speak up and use their voices. If just the parents are talking, they're not the ones who are being affected by the policies the students are. I know, deep down, your intention was never to hurt any of the students in this district. But you have to consider the many declarations of students that are telling you they are being hurt. The school board, it's difficult to talk to. Yes. I might yes. see them in my community I sometimes. I know, you know, they live around here. They're supposed to represent the students that I go to school with. But it's really hard. You just feel unheard. You're just looking out at a sea of nine faces. And I know three of them support me. And I don't know about the other six. I understand they see so many speakers at these meetings, but it feels like they already have their preset opinions. And I have my opinions, they have theirs, and I'm trying to change their minds, but it doesn't always work.